Welcome, guys, to the Full Armor of Game podcast number episode 51. We have a special podcast request. We've had this request for quite some time, and we're finally giving it to you guys. Bible game. This is going to be probably one of the most important podcasts that we've done. We got our name from a Bible verse. It's Ephesians 6 verse. I believe it's 10 or 11. Put on the full armor of God. We got the name put on the full armor of game. And this is very important because as we go through these Bible verses, you'll understand why you need to put on the full armor of game and the full armor of God so you guys don't get abused or manipulated by women. We will protect you guys. And the Bible game is very, very important because there's so much wisdom. There's so much game that the Bible teaches you. So we took some of our favorite verses from the Bible that has to do with relationships, women and men, and stories that you can learn from. And we're going to break it down for you. We bring the crowns and heads of conquered kings to my city steps. You insult my queen. You threaten my people with slavery and death. This is Sparta! Sparta! Put on the whole armor of game. But before we start the podcast, we just want to let you guys know, August 21st, we have our five-week seminar. We only have a couple of spots left. If you guys want to wake up next to beautiful women, if you want to become a player, if you want to get into a relationship with a beautiful girl and learn how to keep her, if you want to learn how to text girls, how to message girls, you get all of our courses included. That is a $1,000 value. Think about that, $1,000 value, then you have us for five weeks teaching you everything you need to know about women from beginning to end. We're going to get you guys right, especially once the summer ends, because that's when all the girls come out. Now they want to start dating again. They want to start settling down. That is prime time for you to start giving these women the hot beef injection. I'm telling you, once the spring, summer ends, they start flocking like the salmon of Capistrano. That's from Dumb and Dumber. But I want to make sure you guys are straight, okay? I want to make sure all you guys are straight. So click the link. The link will be in the Spotify episode of this podcast. It starts August 21st on a Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. That is 6 p.m. Pacific time. We got you guys. We're going to spend the entire night talking to all of you. So get your questions ready after we're done with the lectures that we have for you. Yep, guys, it's uh, one of the best times. We love, you get such growth out of that too because you just get five straight weeks. Your mind's focused. All the questions you have, you get to talk through them. All the questions other guys have, you you get to hear us talk through them as well. So it's just a great way to absorb and you know get this whole understanding women, dating thing taken care of once and for all when you join the five-week seminar. Yeah, so if you guys need help with women or you want to tighten up your game, that is the perfect seminar for all of you. I promise you're going to learn so much. We've had nothing but great testimonials. If you guys are hungry, you will learn this shit. That's our guarantee. That's our promise. We can only do so much, but it's also your persistence and your dedication. How bad do you want this? We can start with the Bible game. So we're going to start with Genesis 3. Why is the Garden of Eden important? Why is that story important where Eve was deceived by Satan? It's very important because it teaches us several lessons. There are several lessons that can be learned from that one little story in Genesis 3. When Eve was deceived by Satan to eat from the tree of knowledge. What happened after she ate from the tree of knowledge? She goes back to Adam and she convinced him and manipulated him to now eat from the tree of knowledge. So God is telling us right then and there, women test men. It's in their nature. God is telling us this. 
that women will test you. It doesn't matter if you've been with her for years, doesn't matter if you just met her, doesn't matter if you just started dating her, if you're out on a date with her, if you just approached her, women are constantly te testing men. Women test men and men test theories. So Adam failed the test miserably. He ate from the fruit of knowledge, from the tree of knowledge. He caved in. He failed Eve's test. And this goes back to my point of telling you guys that alpha men are not born. We are created. We are molded into alpha men. Every guy starts as being a beta male. And no offense, no disrespect to Adam. And a lot of people get very offended when I call Adam a beta male. Because he didn't have a blueprint. He didn't have the podcast that we create for you guys. He didn't have game. He didn't learn the game. He was the only guy during that time. So how was he going to learn all this? How was he going to learn about female nature? We've all failed a woman's test before. So it came to him and he failed. So women will test you. It, God told us this in the Bible. So you guys have to be ready and be prepared to pass a woman's test. And another thing that Genesis 3 teaches us, after they both got caught by God, God said to Adam, have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Adam replied with, the woman whom you gave to me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. So what beta males do is, I notice a pattern, and this is why I call Adam a beta male. They don't take accountability for anything. They're quick to blame others. They're quick to blame this person. They're quick to blame that person. They don't just look in the mirror or they don't own up to the fact that they messed up. You know what? You're right, God. I did eat from the from the tree of knowledge. I shouldn't have never eaten from there. You commanded me not to. That's how a, that's how a real man owns up to his mistakes. You don't blame the woman for it. And that's exactly what Adam did. And if you don't take accountability for everything that happens in your life, you can't grow as a man. And for people that tell me, oh, it doesn't say anywhere in the Bible that he blamed Eve or, you know, he blamed God for even giving him Eve. It says it right here. The way he replied, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. That sounds like someone that is putting the blame on someone else. That doesn't sound like a man who's owning up and taking responsibility for what he did. And Adam, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. If you agree, if you disagree. Yeah. I got to clear my name a little bit, guys. The Adam that Zara's talking about is not me. <laughs> got to clear up. There's a lot of Adam being beta male, you know, called out here. <laughs> so I am not the same Adam from the Bible, just to clarify that. But what I do think another great uh, thing to learn from this is when a woman leads a relationship or a woman is a decision maker in a relationship, destruction happens <laughs> the the world is doomed the relationship is doomed and in so many times right the mantra that guys joke about is the happy wife happy life and when you run that game if that's your mindset if you get caught thinking like that you are in a sense letting her run the relationship and then what's going to happen is she's going to eat the forbidden fruit and all of humanity is doomed if you're not the man in charge leading the relationship you need to have boundaries as a man, you got to have a backbone. You got to have some balls, testicular fortitude. You got to put your foot down and tell your woman, we were commanded not to eat from that tree. What is wrong with you? What are you doing? You have to be a man and put a woman in her place. But once again, he didn't have the blueprint. So I can't blame him because we've yeah, all been know, there before. And one other thing about this too, from the story of, you know, the snake deceiving Eve with a smooth talking tongue and being able to basically manipulate her. That's another part of this is like when a woman re leads a relationship, she's going to be deceived by all of like, let's just think of the mainstream media. If she's the head of the household running the relationship and she's easily deceived in all of mainstream media's preaching some type of propaganda, if that is the leader of your household, that is going to bleed into your children as well, this mindset that she's gaining. So it's important to understand, guys, you've got to be a decision maker. You've got to have balls and you've got to be able to run and lead the house because women are simply more deceived by 
group think women survive with the pack. So if the pack is saying they all say one thing, they all say Kamala Harris is the greatest. Oh, she should be president. She's going to be the greatest. She's going to save us. If the pack says that women out of safety, they they basically morph with the pack. It's the men that need to stand down and be like, hold on, hold on. Something doesn't make sense. No. And then break it down and lead her the right direction. So again, if the woman's leading humanity in the relationship is also doomed. And that's another important lesson. I'm glad you brought that up because I almost forgot this key fact about women. And the story of Adam and Eve teaches us this in the Bible. Women are very impressionable. They're very naive. They can be very naive, especially the younger they are. It wasn't hard for Satan to deceive Eve. It took a little bit of charm, a little bit of charisma. Boom, there you go. Easily deceived, manipulated. So that's why I tell guys or I explain this to women how I don't allow the girls that I'm in relationships with to have guy friends. And this is one of the main reasons, because they're very impressionable. There should only be one man steering the ship, one man behind the steering wheel, one man who is programming his woman. You shouldn't have outside sources chirping in your woman's ears like Satan did, because this is what happens. And could you imagine if you let your girl be friends with guys like me or Adam, the Adam in the podcast? Could you imagine what would happen? With the charm and charisma we have and the game, you think it's going to be hard to deceive your girl into doing what we want her to do? So it goes back to this one story. There are so many lessons in this one little story that teaches us about female nature and about relationships. So that's why I don't allow my girls to have female uh, male friends. Okay. There should only be one leader out of the group. I don't want other men discussing our business together and talking shit about me, planting seeds in her head like Satan did with Eve. Yeah, okay. and just real quick before we move on to the next one with what you just said there is um, that, yeah, only one man leading the ship with her. But guys got to know that you can't just come in on the first date and tell a girl you need to get rid of all of your guy friends. A woman must respect you and look up to you before she would do that for you. So you've got to show her you're a leader. You've got to show her you're a masculine man so that she knows she can trust and follow your lead before she's willing to get rid of those other male friends or whatnot out of her life. So you can't just come in saying, yeah, you need to get rid of all your guy friends. It's like the woman's going to be like, who are you? Get out of my life. No, you're crazy. She's need she needs to have that respect for you first, and then she will follow your lead. And if your lead is saying, hey, get rid of those other male friends out of your life, then she will follow that if she is respects you and looks up to you. Absolutely. And this happened to me. I mentioned this story, Adam, and you're right. She has to buy what you're selling first before you start making all these broader boundaries. You don't let her disrespect you. That boundary always sticks. You lay down the law in the beginning with your respect. But a broader boundary like this for her to give up her guy friends, she has to be invested in you first. And she wants to, she needs to have the relationship with you. She has to want the relationship and yearn for it. That's when you set that type of a boundary. Because I made that mistake of, Telling a girl she can't have guy friends. I don't allow a girl to have guy friends in the beginning. And she looked at me like, who the fuck are you to tell me what I can and cannot do? They will look at you like a control freak because the way women operate is they need to be invested in you sexually, emotionally, mentally, physically first before you can even set that boundary. So that's very important. Do not make that mistake, fellas. Yep. Okay. The second one. This is from 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. So human nature is reflected upon those we spend the most time with. So if you're hanging out with a bunch of losers or dorks that can't get women, guess what? You're also not going to get women. If you're hanging out with guys that are drinking alcohol constantly, getting arrested, getting in trouble doing negative things with their lives, you're also going to get in trouble, get arrested, and you're going to start going downhill. 
This verse is very important. Surround yourself with positive people. That includes women as well that are uplifting, not toxic women. But if you're hanging out with a bunch of guys that are constantly just playing video games, going nowhere in their life, you are going to become exactly like them. And certain people will ruin your bad company. People that smoke weed all the time, they're peer pressuring you. People that are doing drugs, people that are drinking alcohol all the time. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that if you have a drink here or there, but you shouldn't be drinking every night. You shouldn't be drinking more than once a week. Don't drink at all, period. That's my advice, okay? I'm not condoning that, but be responsible. Yeah, and th- another great thing that this can talk about is why we we say to not only, like we mentioned on uh, the last podcast about doing recon on a woman, seeing what she's posting and all that stuff to get a, a, better, a better judge of her character, but this is also why we say watch the company she keeps because if a woman is around a bunch of her single friends that are feminists, that are miserable, that have that I don't like men or men are below me type attitude, that is the going to be the corrupting force in her life. She talks about a little argument you and her had. And again, if you're the man setting your boundaries, standing your ground, when a woman talks to her girlfriends about it, all of her girlfriends are going to go, oh, he sounds controlling. Don't let him do that to you. So watching who she's around is a good tell because if they are a lot of those forever single women that are going to be in her life, they are going to try to corrupt her about come out, come drink with us. Let's go party with these other guys over here. Let's do this or that. And she'll be in her ear playing armchair quarterback, trying to tell this girl what she should or shouldn't put up with in your guys' relationship, which has nothing to do with that other girl. Yeah, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So if her girls are a bunch of promiscuous women, if they're all posting provocative pictures on social media, if they're all having a girl's night out, coming home late past midnight, your girl is doing the same thing. If they're all smoking weed, getting drunk, hooking up with random guys, your girl is doing the same thing, bro. Don't let her make you think otherwise. She's not an angel because you are the sum of the company that you keep. So next verse, and this one's very important, especially in relationships. James 1 verse 19. Okay. James 1 19. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Control your emotions and never act out emotionally. You will regret the words you speak that pierce like knives. And once the damage is done, it's too late. And a lot of guys, especially in the Players University or guys that ask us for advice, their girl did this, their girl said that, and they quickly act out emotionally. They text her back something that I know they're going to regret. They weren't thinking logically about it. And now it's too late. You can't take it back, fellas. And this is how one of my relationships got ruined with the girl I speak highly of. I thought I was going to marry her and be with her forever. During COVID, we broke up. It went downhill when I noticed a guy from one of our college classes, this beta dork, kept leaving flirty comments on her Instagram pictures. I had class with him as well, and I knew he wanted her. And I could tell that he kept flirting with her, trying to get with her, pretending to be her friend, that snake that was trying to slither inside of her pants. I overreacted. I texted her because of my emotions. I couldn't control myself. And I told her, if he leaves any more comments on your pictures, I'm going to knock this guy out. And it quickly escalated from there. And she said, I can handle it. You're not my father. That didn't sit well with me. So I replied back, well, then handle it if you're such a big girl then. And it just went from one text to another, to another, to another. And it escalated so bad, she never saw this side of me. My insecurities came out. Yeah, the makeup sex was amazing that night. It was incredible. I've never heard her make sounds like that in my life with the makeup sex. But makeup sex isn't going to hold your relationship together, fellas. So that's why this verse is so important. Be quick to listen. And I should have been slow to speak. 
and slow to become angry. So if you guys are going through this type of situation, calm yourself down, go for a walk, talk to someone, talk to me and Adam, the Players University or the other guys in that group chat. Think about what you want to say and we'll help you. That's such a better solution than acting out emotionally with words that you can't take back. Because when you have that pent up anger inside of you and you start texting your girl, bombarding her with words that pierce like knives, it hurts and it hurts her. Okay. So you have to think of something logical to come up with. Once you calm down and your emotions aren't riled up, that's when you can talk to her. Yeah, there's so many good things we could break apart with just this one because even though everyone should be quick to listen and slow to speak, that right there sums up what we talk about with guys on dates. You know, trying to speak 20% of the time, let her speak 80% of the time, listening to her and controlling the want and need to blabber and talk. So that's a great key from there. Another thing like this is... um being with women, you always want to be cool, calm, and collected. And the guys that get angry or emotional or they snap too quickly, the reason that's such a problem is, again, you want to be the image of the rock. And that woman is the image of the chaotic waters splashing against the rock. But that rock is steady, cool, calm, and collected. And when you are steady as a, as a man, as a rock, that woman feels like she can go into her feminine and be a, be that chaotic water. Chaotic water is the impulsiveness, the quick, uh, the quick to talk, slow to listen, and quick to become angry. That's more of the feminine, impulsive emotion, emotional reactivity. So you, you as a man want to be that cool, calm, and collected rock so that woman can feel like she can be a woman around you. If you're the one flipping your switch too quickly. You're the one getting emotional, needy, checking in, or who are you with? And, and texting her like, who are you with? Tell me everyone that's there and all that. And you're getting that, you know, kind of impulsive, chaotic energy. That woman feels like she has to now harden up and be the masculine rock. And then she loses attraction for you because she needs that polarity. She needs to have that strong rock to feel like she can be a woman. And so and with the last thing, yep. oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, and with women, you always have to be a good listener. That's one of the keys that you guys need to have in your repertoire is being a good listener with women. Be quick to listen. They're telling you things. They're telling on themselves. So you have to pick up on those red flags and keep them in your back pocket. Yeah. And then another thing with that, that will drive men nuts, us men, it drives me nuts too, but I know I have to do it to play the game. Is it to be good with women, you've got to be a good listener and not be so quick to jump in and speak when you're sitting there going, oh, she's telling me this problem she has. And you're like, oh, I got a solution. I'm going to jump in and fix it for her. I speak to women about this all the time. They hate that. Women just want to talk it out, vent, and they just want you to listen. And then by them venting all that, then they get that off their chest. And they feel better about things. And then, you know, they can look to a solution afterwards. But in the moment, women hate when they're talking about something, venting about a, something at work or the gossip that ha happened at work and all this. And then the guy's sitting here going, oh, I, I know how to solve that. Just do this. And I, I'm guilty of this too, guys. It's our natural instinct as men. But that happens all the time with women is they just bring up this thing. And I'm like, oh, I could solve this right now. But I've learned I just bite my tongue, listen and just let her vent it all out. Then she's like, oh, I feel heard. I feel listened to. And then at that point, then I could be like, hey, do you want me to give you a solution? And she might say, yes, what do you think? Or she'll go, no, I feel good now, thank you. And like, that's the trick. You, it, us men have to bite our tongues, even though it'll drive you nuts, but that is another key success to be better with women. That's great advice that I should have taken earlier today because the same thing That's was hard. happening with the girl who was going through something and once again you want to because men are always trying to fix things yeah so you're trying to give her a solution and i should have just shut up and listened and that's it yeah i almost think about it like if a girl is about to vent about something i'm like letting her get her entire battery out just like let her just buzz off get that entire battery out until she's like 
gotten all out of her system. And then you'll see her just kind of have this like relief about her. And then at that point, that's when I can be like, like all right, okay. Hey, do you want to hear my advice on this? Or you good? And she's like, oh, I'm good. Or I want to hear that. But it's like, once she gets that all, once her battery gets all juiced out, then you can come in with the more masculine solution. But I always ask about it. Like, hey, do you want a solution or no? And yeah, women so will the, tell you. They'll be like, yes or no. The key to remember is never give her unsolicited dick pics and never give her unsolicited advice unless she asks you for it. Yeah, because okay. women will call that mansplaining. That's exactly what they'll say is like men are coming in and they're like mansplaining something to her. And she's like, no, I know. I just wanted you to listen. I just wanted yep. you to let me vent. Yep. Yeah, it's so it's so true. But even if she asks you for unsolicited dick pics, do not give it to her. But no. if she asks you for <laughs> unsolicited advice, you give it to her. But keep it short. Don't start mansplaining. OK, so the fourth one, Proverbs 12, verse 18. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise bring healing. So unkind words can pierce the heart like a sword. Name calling and accusations hurt people. If a woman is calling out your name or speaks with a toxic tongue, you know what you guys do? You check her on that. A woman should only call you uplifting names. That's it. She shouldn't call you a biatch. She shouldn't call you stupid. She shouldn't call you this or that. Anything that has a negative connotation to it, you shut that shit down and you tell her, hey, listen, you're only going to call me uplifting names. Give her a list of names that you want her to call you king, master, babe, your name, anything that's positive. You give her a list, you tell her to choose one or you can pick one for her. That's what you guys have to do when a woman is being disrespectful and calling you something she shouldn't be calling you. And if she still does, and if she still keeps up that behavior, guess what? You leave her because a good woman should heal you and uplift you with her kind, feminine words. But at the same time, don't say anything reckless to her because words pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise, they bring healing. So don't give her any type of reckless types of words that you know you can't take back. This goes to the previous verse that we told you guys. This is very important. You don't want to be the guy that ever puts your woman down or destroys her ego. You always want your woman to be confident around you, positive around you, because when a woman is confident, it's harder to pick her up. It's much more difficult to get her to cheat on you. But a woman whose ego has been destroyed because the man back at home, whoever she's dating or whoever she's with, the man that's destroying her ego and using reckless words on her. I'm telling you, those women they're the easiest to pick up because all it takes is a compliment from a guy like me, from a guy like Adam to lift her back up, to show her that she still has it as a woman. Those are the easiest women to pick up. Their eyes light up. You already know sold. It's done. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. And it's a, it's a tough, there's like a tough line there because on one hand it's like, early on, maybe like early on on first dates or, you know, when you're first texting or dating apps with, with a girl, you want to be challenging her. You want to be teasing her. You want to be in a more lighthearted sense, you know, uh, hurting her ego. But like on it's like a casual, lighthearted thing. Like if a girl tells me her favorite animal, I make fun of her about that. But if you're with a girl, you're in a relationship with a girl and you're destroying her ego. Oh, you look fat or all that type of stuff that is like detrimental. So there's a fine line of when we say like, if we're, if we're talking about busting a girl's balls early on a date or destroying her ego because they are entitled, it's not out of like a hate thing. It's more out of like with a smile. You're playfully teasing her. You're playfully challenging her. But when, you know, I, I've heard of relationships where it is very toxic, where people, are, you know, both man and woman are saying things back to each other that cut deep to the point where it's like that's, that's not someone you want to be with. So there's a difference between lighthearted challenging and all that and really destroying a woman. I love this book called The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz, I believe. And he talks about uh, 
how words are magic and everyone i have speaking. that someone just gave me that book adam dude i a love woman, that a book. woman i'm dating just gave me this book and she keeps asking if i've read it and i'm showing it on camera right now and that's i love crazy. i got that you behind me somewhere it. in my I, I love that book I, i've read it probably eight times throughout my life but uh you with your words you're, you're speaking magic you're either speaking dark magic or white magic you have the ability to curse people with your words and make them live in their own hell or you have a uh the ability to uplift people with your words and create heaven on earth in a sense of the magic you're speaking with your words and so one thing i would i guess suggest because i do know with that book i love that book but m more women than men have read that in my experience a lot of women have read that book it's like kind of like a hippie spirituality type book but if you are dealing with a woman that is very um she has that edgy she's always like speaking almost toxically with the words uh obviously if it's if she's doing it to you then get rid of her out of your life but if there's a girl in your life that you want to help her speak better with her words, recommend that book to her, The Four Agreements. It's a quick read and just see if there's a transformation in her from reading that because that whole thing about words have magic, like I think it's a great, I think all humans should know that idea, but Zara's absolutely right. Words, words are powerful. Yeah, the power of the tongue and anything you speak, it comes into existence. And look at all the rappers that always talked about death, talked about hurting other people. I'm not going to say the word, but you know what I mean. The K-I-L-L-I-N-G word. They ended up in prison or they ended up dead. Because the power of the tongue, if you keep talking about something, you bring it to life. And that's very important. So if you guys, we teach you a specific technique in the five-week seminar of how you guys can evolve into becoming the man that attracts women and becoming more of a respectable man with the way you walk and carry yourself. It's called subliminal messages. So your subconscious mind is very powerful and the words you speak into existence comes true. And if you say something over and over again and you envision yourself becoming that person, guess what happens? Over time, your body believes it because your mind believes it and your mind tricks your body into believing it. And that's something we teach you. And that is also something in my attraction ebook. And if you guys take it seriously, you could do this exercise for a month, two months, even a year until you really start noticing that transformation and you start walking differently and all these women start becoming attracted to you. So it's very powerful, guys. Only say positive things that you can bring into existence. Never say anything negative about yourself, even self-deprecating humor. I don't advise you use self-deprecating humor or putting yourself down. Yeah, and and I don't I don't know how true this is, but I was reading um I've read a couple of books where they've mentioned like in the Bible, if you look at the word sword and you replace the word sword with sacred word, like S and word, sword, sacred word. And they said, like, go through the Bible. And every time you see the word sword, think about sacred word. And when they talk about using the sword, it's like using your words, using your words to speak things into existence, manifest, you know, you can go down that route. But your your sword in today's world right we don't carry around swords your sword is your sacred word what you speak what how you speak to yourself how you speak to other people how you speak about others when they're not around that is your sword and what what are you using your sword to do dark magic or white magic yeah and they also say the bible and the word of god that's the sword so sacred you use word. that word that's the sword the sacred word that's how you protect yourself and you fight spiritual battles through the word of god because you don't have any type of special deities or special powers. So what do you have left? The word of God, which is the sword and the spear. Yeah. Okay. So the next one, number five, Proverbs 11, verse 13. This goes for a lot of women because this is in their nature. So if you're a guy who engages in this type of behavior, you're a bitch. You're feminine. No guy should ever do this. A gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy person keeps a secret. You never, ever gossip behind your girl's back or anyone's back for that matter. And this should be one of your boundaries with a woman, fellas.
because once again, this happened in my relationship. I'll get into that. But you guys can always forgive, forget, and love each other the next day. But when you gossip about your loved ones, your girlfriend or your boyfriend, two family members, two friends, they will never forgive or forget. You've painted the other person as the enemy now. So what happens is when they start coming around to family gatherings or events that you have with your friends, they feel that awkward tension. It's it's very tense and they don't understand why they feel it. I, I'm going to tell you right now why you feel that tension in the air. Because your girl has been talking shit about you. That's why you feel that tension in the air. Her friends know about you, what she's been saying. Her friends don't like you now. Her parents hate you. Her siblings hate you. That's why you feel that tension anytime you go over there. So this has to be one of your boundaries. I'm serious. I started adding this as one of my boundaries with women that want a relationship with me. I'll explain to them because you have to let most women know they don't know this shit. Listen, one thing you can't do is gossip about me unless it's something positive. You could say whatever you want. But if you say anything negative, you start gossiping about me to your friends, to your family members, they will never forgive and they will never forget. I'll always be the enemy in their eyes. But me and you, the next day, we could love each other. We could forgive. We could forget. So if you have any type of issue with me, you come talk to me about it. You don't invite a third party. You don't talk to a third party about your problems and issues. And a lot of girls do this because girls gossip. You come talk to me like an adult. No one has to know our business. I like a girl that doesn't gossip. She's not a chatterbox. She keeps her mouth shut. So you guys have to explain this to your girl. And none of you guys should be gossiping about anyone, period. Because a trustworthy person keeps a secret. They know how to keep a secret. And they take that to the grave with them. Another example of you leading in the relationship, not letting a woman lead is you lead by showing her stuff like when she's gossiping, that's when you can nip it in the butter. Be like, hey, I don't need to hear about that. Nah, I don't want to hear about that. Tell me something positive or something like that. You can say, eh, give me something positive about them. Or sometimes I'll be with some buddies and they'll be harping on another buddy of ours. And I'll be like, hey, tell me something positive about him. Balance it out. Show me that you're being fair about this. Like everyone has pros and cons. Everyone's got strengths and weaknesses. Other examples too is leading this is like, even in general, just talking man to man or man to woman or anything. Uh, sometimes something will come up where maybe you spoke with a buddy and they told you something kind of in confidence. And then someone else asks you about that. Hey, what's going on with him and her? What's going on with their relationship? Well, if someone says something like that to me and my buddy told me something in confidence, I'll just say something like, hey, that's not my story to tell. Or, hey, that's it's something that I don't think you wanted me to share with other people. If you want to find that out, ask them yourself. And when you do that, not only are you keeping the trust of the buddies or whatever they told you something in confidence, but also that person you're interacting with right then and there, whether that's your girl or another guy or just another person, they now go, okay, if I want to tell Adam something, I can trust that if it's a secret, he'll keep the secret. If I tell him something in confidence, he'll keep it in confidence. And so that's just another way around is you don't want to be known as the guy that is the gossiper, the guy that can't, you know, keep a secret that is going to just hurt your reputation overall. And that's feminine energy. And that's very unattractive. So, Adam, you made a great, great point and a great example. And I want you guys to go back and listen to what he said. Say if you're with the girl, you're in the car with her, you're driving, she's in the passenger seat. She starts gossiping about a specific employee at work she, she doesn't like. She starts defaming her character. You have to quickly stop her and say, hey, listen, I don't mind you venting to me. I know I'm your man. You can open up to me. I'm your safe zone. Talk to me about anything. But what we're not going to do is assassinate another person's character. I'm not going to sit here and listen to you gossip about someone else. Do you understand that? Do you realize how much they'll respect you for that? And they know not to ever speak negatively about someone. And after a couple minutes, I usually wait a minute or two. I'll come back and say this. It's good to have you back again. Boom. 
Now you reeled her back in. Like you're rewarding her. Like it's good to have you back. It's good to have such and such back, whatever her name is. Okay, and you give her that sly smile. So you have to shut that shit down, nip it in the bud. You're not going to be anyone's therapist. And I made a mistake last week going out on a date with this beautiful Latina woman. And she just kept venting to me about her ex-boyfriend of 12 years. And then this other guy who she said had a little dick. And all these stories she was telling me. I was sitting there listening because I really didn't care. I could have slept with her if I just told her right off the gate, I nipped it in the bud and I said, hey, listen, I don't mind you talking to me about anything, but I'm not anyone's therapist. I really don't give a fuck, to be honest with you. If I would have said that to her, I would have gotten her so wet. I think I could have probably slept with her that night. But since I didn't, and this is why we tell you guys, you have to follow the rules of the game. You're not special. I'm not special. Adam isn't special. If you don't follow these rules and you sit there acting like her therapist now, listening to her relationship problems she had and how she's naive, she's too nice, she keeps giving, 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 and these guys keep fucking her over, or this guy had a little wiener and he came to her door crying how he was in love with her after three months, he couldn't see himself without her, and she started making fun of him. You have to nip that shit in the bud. Because I guarantee you every other guy is sitting there listening to her bullshit, being the emotional tampon. And then here comes a guy like you who puts his foot down and puts her in her place. Do you realize how much of a mind fuck that is for her? Because her beauty doesn't work on you. So learn from our mistakes, especially yeah. with me. Sometimes I need to get my ass Back in the ground, someone needs to kick my ass down until I get back up and I learn from my mistakes because I'm not immune to the rules of the game like I think I am. Yeah, yeah. And like like if women try to bring up other guys and talk about them in front of me, I will just agree and amplify or I will like disagree and amplify whatever she's saying about that guy. I just overly play it like, oh, no, this guy sounds cool. Like, hey, does he golf? I want. I need a new golfing buddy. Like, give me his number like, and I'll just do that. And that will get a girl off of her, you know, little venting rant as well when she's not getting me to just be her uh, a green audience. I'm just like, oh, no, this guy sounds cool. Now, nah, I sound like he made the right move. And I, you know, do it that way. Or just the other day, a girl was complaining about a coworker to me and she was just venting, venting, venting. And again, I just said, all right, she can't be all bad. Tell me one thing you like about her. And that literally stopped her. It froze her. You could see. And then she even kind of sat back and she kind of smiled and she was like, well, actually, we're able to talk about conspiracy theories together. And that's really fun. And I was able to detract her negative train and turn it into something more positive. And then I was able to change the conversation around and just switch up the mood. So there's there's you know, there's ways around this, guys. But yeah, you don't want to be a part of that gossip train. Yeah, that's a perfect example of a pattern interrupt. Pattern interrupt. That's a great way. That's a perfect yeah. example where it's kind of like a mind fuck, but they go along with what you're saying and they forget about the negative. Yeah. But I, I love that tactic of you saying, oh, you should give me his number. I want to hang out with him. I would go even further and say, you know, what? you should give me his number. I'd love to see what he says about you. Oh, yeah. See, yeah. So you could do that either that's way. That's very like, powerful because that's you, you implementing in her head. That guy. Instead, yeah. of, I don't I don't try to like girls try to throw competition at me. Oh, this guy's chasing me. Oh, this guy. I'm like, oh, good luck, man. I hope I, I'm pulling for him. It's like when girls try to throw competition at me or throw other guys in front of my face. I show them that I don't care by basically just amping that guy up. I'm like, nah, he sounds cool. I bet you're the one that screwed it up. Like I can just do all sorts of stuff like that. And it's just like. Basically, I'm telling her, hey, you're not going to have any fun talking about other guys in front of me. But I just tell it to her in a way of that where I'm just not agreeing with her. I'm like, I ah, know he sounds cool. You were probably the problem. And then it's like yeah, I'm ganging up with the ghost of this guy yeah. on her and I'm challenging her and playfully teasing her in that way. You could even amplify it, Adam, if she says, oh, this guy wants me or this guy's chasing me. Oh, really? If you need help messaging him, just let me know. I'm the master yeah, yeah. at the I'm a master at the texting game. And it's such yeah. a mind fuck because they're like, who is this guy? He really doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> you really yep. don't. It's, so they can't, so they can't get to you. And that's so funny, Zara, because you and I know that when a girl goes, who is this guy? He doesn't give an F. 
we know that that means like when I hear that, if a girl says that about a guy, I'm like, oh, I bet you she has some attraction for him. But again, when you go back to Betaville, that would have been the last thing that I thought a girl would be attracted to. I'd be like, oh, he doesn't give an F. Like she shouldn't want him because the Disney movies that would never work out. It's always mm -hmm. the guy that cares for her and is always there for her and sweet to her and all that. And it's just another example of how backwards everything is. Indifference. The guy that doesn't give an F. She wants to make him give an F. So she's going to try harder to get on his radar. The guy Indif that's all indifference is powerful. In indifference. Indifference is it's powerful. It's powerful. Only if she's not your girlfriend. You don't want to act too indifferent. If she's your girlfriend, listen to her and pay attention to what she's telling you. But. I 100% agree, and I wish I played that differently. So now you guys know. We're not perfect. Things happen, but we learn from our mistakes. The next one, number six, Matthew 7, verse 6. Do not throw your pearls before pigs. So I never understood what this meant, and it's so simple. But what this means is, <laughs> in a nutshell, pigs do not appreciate pearls. So if a girl isn't following your program, fellas, the advice you're giving her, the game you're putting her on with what you're teaching her, setting your boundaries and her respecting them, you move on. OK, you move the fuck on. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, you shake the dust off your feet when you leave them and you walk the fuck away. When what you represent is not welcome, you move on. You're not responsible for the way a pig perceives you. So the advice that Jesus gave his disciples when handling rejection was to simply go elsewhere. Find a woman who will appreciate the value that you bring or that you can add to her life. If she's not showing you admiration, fellas, you move on and you go to someone who will admire you. So that's how you handle rejection. If a woman isn't being receptive, to you as a man, you go elsewhere. And this is amazing because when I read this verse, do not throw your pearls before pigs. I always think about the LGBTQT rallies and how there's always a Bible thumper at these rallies trying to preach the word of God and they always get arrested or they always get ridiculed, tomatoes thrown at them, people acting aggressive. This verse is going towards you guys. Do not throw your pearls before pigs. Pigs do not appreciate pearls. So why are you wasting your time preaching the word of God at these rallies? That doesn't make sense to me, bro. You're not changing anyone's life that goes to these rallies. I hate to say it. You take the word of God, take the preaching elsewhere to someone that will appreciate it. Same thing with women. If a woman's not following my program, she's not even listening to what I'm saying. She's not respecting my boundaries. I'm going fucking elsewhere. I'm not staying with her. I'm not throwing any more pearls before pigs. Yeah, and this could be taken a lot of ways too. Like you mentioned with the, the rally, the Bible thumper at the rally. Like I learned this early on when I started this business with texting prints is like I would throw pearls at pigs or the trolls that would comment on something and be like this doesn't really work no that wouldn't actually work and then i would sit here and be like oh no of course it works and i would explain to them why this method works with this woman and the psychology behind it and all that and what i was doing is i was just throwing pearls at pigs they weren't they didn't have ears to listen they weren't ready for the advice they didn't want to hear the advice they wanted to live in blue pill beta mon matrixville and I was throwing pearls at these pigs that didn't appreciate or want to understand what was being told, told to them. I relate this in another way is that I think so many guys throw their pearls, their time and attention and energy at pigs. And I mean the pigs that are like on dating apps, these women that for all they know are pigs right now because the woman does, the woman does no effort, nothing. And these guys are already like trying so hard to work to get her on a date. I do not throw dates out to pigs. I do not offer a date to a woman if she hasn't been investing. I do not offer a date to a woman if she's not double texting me or consistently replying quicker than me. If she's not reaching out to me, starting conversations, I am not going to throw my pearls, my time, energy, and attention at pigs that won't appreciate it. I will give a girl a date when she 
evolves from Pigville to a woman and she invests a little bit. She shows me that she's putting her time, energy and effort in. And then now I'll be like, all right, my Pearl, this awesome $10 bill Toys R Us date, boom. I can now throw that at her because she's no longer a pig. She's earned it. She's going to appreciate that. But guys going on dating apps, being so thirsty, it's like, have some self-respect. Do not throw your pearls at the pigs on there. Make them earn it. Yeah, and that's a good model to have as well. Picture yourself having 10 pearls out of the week. You can only give one pearl to one woman. Would you keep wasting those 10 pearls you have on that same woman that's not being receptive? On that same woman who doesn't seem like she's interested? Same woman you're wasting another pearl on, double texting her, wasting another pearl on, giving her more attention, asking her out on a date, or would you rather save those pearls and disperse them on other women? So you guys have to also take that into consideration. Your time, you have to put a price on it. Your attention, you have to put a price on it. You have to put a value on it. That's the only way women will start seeing you with some type of value. The guy that sends her one message on a dating app, if she doesn't respond, cool, you're on to the next one. Because what happens is, this is a great tip that Adam also gave, I, I remember, is say if you rematch with that same girl or she goes through her messages and she sees